Speaker, I move that in the opinion of this House that the government should immediately strike an advisory council on pediatric autoimmune neuropsychiatric disorder associated with streptococcal infections and pediatric acute onset neuropsychiatric syndrome to advise the Ministry of Health on research, diagnosis, treatment, and education relating to the disorder and syndrome. Thank you. Mr. Bailey has moved private members' notice of motion number 64. Pursuant to Standing Order 98, the member has 12 minutes for his presentation. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. It's an honour to stand here today and discuss this important issue. <clears throat> I'm reminded of what my former colleague, the member from Niagara West Glanbrook, said in his farewell speech to the Legislature, we are a privileged 107 in this place. We have the special opportunity to walk into this chamber and take our place at our desks and talk about the issues that are most important to the people in our communities. We have the real ability to create positive change for the people of Ontario. So I'm optimistic that the members will seize that opportunity and support this motion that we are discussing here today. What I'm asking this House in this motion to do is that the members of this House support my call for the government to immediately strike an advisory council that will make recommendations to the Ministry of Health about how best to support children and families dealing with panda parents. You may recall that just about 15 months ago, this legislature wisely voted to pass Bill 43 into law, creating a Panda Pans Awareness Day in Ontario. Every October 9th now is officially recognized in Ontario as Panda Pans Awareness Day. I was very proud that the members of this legislature chose to go join the growing movement across North America to recognize the need to educate and raise awareness of pediatric autoimmune neuropsychiatric disorder associated with streptococcal infection, otherwise referred to in this bill as PANDAS, and the pediatric acute onset neuropsychiatric syndrome, otherwise referred to as PANS. I'll refer to that in the rest of the uh, bill. I was really taking the chance to get it out that many times. But the work to help children and families who are confronted with these diseases does not stop with one day of awareness a year. For those families, the impact of Panda Pans is felt every day of the year. I want to take this opportunity to recognize some of those families who are here with us today in the West Members Gallery. I would like to introduce them once again. I introduced them this morning. Carrie Hendricks is here, the mother of Jonah Hendrickson, Aaron Kowarczyk, Janet Trider, Ellen Nickel, Erica Mills, Doreen Crombie, there they are, Doreen Crombie, and Don Crombie. And these are some of the leaders in this struggle across Ontario, and I want to salute them at this time and thank them for being here. These are just a few of the people across Ontario who make up the Panda Pans Ontario Network. I know that there are many more who are probably watching today who would have liked to have been in attendance. They have all faced the challenge of dealing with the symptoms of Panda Pans either personally or in caring for a loved one. Please join me in welcoming them to Queen's Park today. Pandas, <clears throat> I'm not going to go through that long name, I'll stumble over it. Pandas describes a subset of children or adolescents who have either an abrupt onset of obsessive compulsive disorder or tick disorder symptoms or an acute worsening of symptoms following a streptococcus infection. PANS, which stands for Pediatric Acute Onset Neuropsychiatric Syndrome, describes the sudden acute onset of any neuropsychiatric condition, for example, OCD, anxiety, depression, irritability, or other regression that cannot be explained by any other neurological or medical disorder. This is a lot to take in, so let me simplify it just a bit. Children and adolescents are all infected at some time or other with the strep virus, which we all know is very common. I'm sure every member of this house who has children or grandchildren has at some time had to deal with the spread of the strep virus. After the strep infection has run its course, parents are noticing that their children are acting different. They are showing behaviors and traits that they didn't have before the strep infection was present. Things like obsessive compulsive behavior, generalized anxiety, joint pain, restrictive eating, tics, separation anxiety, hyperactivity, sleep difficulties, and regression in both language and behavior. This is obviously very troubling for any parent or grandparent. So parents and grandparents are going to their doctors and <coughs> pediatricians and asking for help. 
But because the awareness and understanding of Panda Pans has not permeated the mainstream thinking of the medical community, which uh, our own Minister of Health acknowledged today and the former minister acknowledged to me over a year ago when we passed the bill for the day of recognition. Thinking of the medical community, the symptoms that these children are displaying are often being confused with other conditions, Mr. Madam Speaker. As a result, these children are potentially being misdiagnosed, and they end up taking medication to deal with their symptoms, but the root of the problem is never being addressed. A perfect example of a lack of, of understanding in how to properly address panda pans can be found in the response that I received from the former Minister of Health to a question I tabled April 16, 2015, in this House. At that time, I asked the member the minister to detail what the Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care was doing to support patients and children dealing with the Panda Pans diagnosis. The minister responded, quote, Panda Pans are not fully understood, end of quote. The minister continued, quote, Ontario's health care system provides support through treatment of symptoms such as OCD and tick disorders, end of quote. That's very important, Madam Speaker, because of a lack of understanding our medical community ends up prescribing treatments for the symptoms, but not the root cause of the disease. For many parents, this is an incredibly frustrating and scary situation to deal with. I think we all agree that parents know their children best. But what do you do when a medical professional suggests that your child, who has changed almost overnight, should begin being medicated by psychiatric drugs like Zoloft, Prozac, and Cymbalta? To be clear, these are drugs that are used to deal with things like depression and anxiety. I'll yield to my colleague uh, from Elgin, Middlesex, London. I know he'll go into maybe greater detail on what those drugs can do, being not. a pharmacist. <laughs> Mr. Sh Madam Speaker, every community in our province is facing the challenge of how do we deal with youth mental health issues. I can't help but wonder, is it possible that young people with treatable medical issues, like band of fans, are being misdiagnosed? Not on purpose, but because of a lack of uh, experience and education of symptoms like depression or anxiety as having mental health issues. Of course, no parent wants to see their med child medicated needlessly. There is a very powerful document, documentary by, f by the filmmaker Tim Sorrell killed, quote, my kid is not crazy, end of quote. The film follows the story of six children and their families as they fight to have their children properly diagnosed. It is an experience that I think each and every one of the guests here today on the Pans of Pans Ontario Network have experienced firsthand. And that is why it is so important that this government of Ontario join this fight to raise awareness of Pan to Pans as a possible diagnosis in these situations. The advisory council I'm seeking your support for would ideally include a multitude of perspectives. But first and foremost, it would include parent representatives. The parents and the children who have lived these experiences must be part of the protest to educate, inform, and advance our understanding of Panda fans. These stories are very powerful. I would strongly encourage each member of this legislature to set up meetings with representatives of the Panda fans Ontario in your communities. And believe me, ladies and gentlemen, they exist in every community in Ontario. So I would urge you to reach out, and I have uh, contacts here that will make sure that uh, they make uh, their members aware of your uh, con uh, connections and addresses. I know that a number of members already held meetings. I want to thank those members for that. I know the member from Beaches East York is going to speak later today. He's met with someone in his riding. In addition to, every, to parent and child representation on the advisory council, my hope is the government can turn to the example that is currently being provided in uh, the state of Illinois, which struck its own advisory council in 2015. That panel has a wide, diverse selection of experts in medicine, research, wellness, and child development to inform its recommendations. I know any parent is going to say that they want to know that everything is being considered when it comes to the health of their child. Once diagnosed, treatment of panda pans may be as simple as antibiotics or an anti-inflammatory medication, and the impact on the child can be seen almost overnight. This is important information and potentially life-changing for those affected. Before my time is up, I want to mention that the major driver behind the bill to create the Panda Pans Awareness Day on October 9th and to, and to form this advisory council uh, is an organization that was started in Sarnia, my riding of Sarnia-Lampton by Carrie Hendrickson, who I introduced earlier today. 
<clears throat> Carrie, as a parent, saw these dramatic changes in their children and knew something was, wasn't right with her, with her fellow members. So she started asking questions, making phone calls, and organizing, organizing people around the province. And now, with the help of the families that are here today and many more that can't be here, they are doing a lot of great work in getting the word out about Panda Pans. I hope that members from each party will take a few moments to say hello to Carrie and the other visitors from the Panda Pans Ontario to learn more about their personal stories. As I wrap up, I'm going to circle back to the thought I started my remarks with. As members of this legislature, we have a great privilege to sit here and to be able to impact people's lives in positive ways. I can think of no better way for the members of this legislature to execute that privilege, to effect positive change, especially those members sitting in the government benches, than voting to support this motion this afternoon. But then, once that is done, directly appealing to their colleague, the, the colleagues, the Premier and the Minister of Health, to act without delay in striking that advisory council on Panda Pans. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I look forward to the remainder of the debate. And thank you very much to uh, my colleagues for listening to me. Further debate, the member, the member from uh, London, Fanshawe. Thank you, Speaker. And it, oh, it's always a pleasure to stand in the legislature, especially on Thursday afternoons, when each member of, um, of the legislature who represents their uh, constituents. I'm just going to ask that those people that are having conversations uh, make them a little quieter so that uh, the people who have come to hear about this bill are able to hear. Uh, I'm sorry for interrupting, but thank you. Thank you, Speaker. And, and it is very important. As I said, this is probably one of the most exciting parts of our job when we're here as legislatures representing our constituents and uh, understanding what issues are brought forward in our ridings so that we can voice them here. And so, you know, I want to say congratulations to the member of Sarnia Lambton for, you know, obviously there's concerns. There's concerns in his riding. People, have, he's been talking to people. People have come to, you know, uh, consult with him and meet with him and let them know that this is a problem and that they're, he, they need answers. And so, of course, they're here today and we welcome all the guests uh, that are here today and, um, and to educate legislatures. And that's what the member from Sarnia Lambton is doing. You know, until I, um, you know, until I became familiar with the fact that we have October 9th, a day that recognizes the Pandas and Pans Ontario Day, you know, no one really knew about the subject, perhaps, unless you happen to come across a constituent or uh, some stakeholder or someone in a sector of the healthcare industry that actually brought to your attention, or more importantly, people who are experiencing people who are experiencing those difficult health issues that come to us and talk to us. So, you know, uh, the member from Sarnia Lambton has asked this House to, um, has asked this government and all of us here to uh, support immediately striking an advisory council on pediatric, autoimmune, neuropsychiatric, psychiatric disorder associated with streptococcal infections and pediatric acute onset of neuropsychiatric syndrome to advise the Minister of Health and Long-Term Care on research, diagnosis, treatment, education relating to the disorder and syndrome. So what this tells me is that there's not a lot of information out there because I, you know, I tried to Google it on the internet. That's the first source we have. Back in the day before internet happened, I, I'm, you know, I am a little bit uh, mature in my uh, age here. Um, we used to go to the library. <laughs> we used to go to the library, we used to go to the card catalog, and we used to search out books and articles and information. And microfiche, that was our internet uh, back then. Everything electronically, that's where you found things on the internet, microfiche. Now, it's so easy, it's so, it's so uh, well, it isn't easy for the North. We know that they don't have broadband, as many of them. Have it in libraries. Have it in libraries, but you know, at home, right? It's not so accessible. Uh, but for us, we're, we're privileged. We're privileged here. And so I went to the internet and I tried to uh, look up some information on this, and it's very scant. There is not a lot, if any, information on the internet about this. So when the member is talking about having uh, you know, an advisory council to look at this issue, he's asking for information to be gathered. He's asking for acknowledgement that this is happening and that people can bring their experiences to educate us. Um, and he want, this will be a, a form of research, obviously. And then people here today, the families here today, Speaker, they are looking for answers, right? They're looking for answers to a, diagno to a diagnosis. 
that, um, you know, that they're experiencing, whether it's themselves or their children. And um, that's what parents do. You know, if something happens, uh, you know, an illness to a child, they expect to go to their health care system, they go to their doctor, uh, they go to the emergency room uh, when it's not overcrowded, and they get help. You know, they get some uh, medication, they may be... Uh, maybe it's surgery, but there's generally some diagnosis, there's generally, you know, something that can help the ailment that they've come to find treatment for. Um, but in this case, with pans and pa and pandas and pans, it's not so ready readily available, it's not even diagnosed, like there's not much, much around diagnosis. We know that we've heard uh, from parents and looking at the information I've uh, sought out, that it often starts, you know, with um, the streptococcus, and then somehow there's other um, you know, side effects or ailments or health concerns that arise, and so parents are concerned, um, and they want to help with this, and they want to know what kind of treatment, what kind of um, you know preventative measures. If you can, if you can identify some of these health risks when it comes to pandas and pans, what are some of the preventive things um, that can happen so that it doesn't escalate into these other symptoms that. Uh, have been highlighted before. And so if there's ways to do that, I think the advisory council is a good first step. You know, uh, we need to have, especially I agree with the member from uh, Sarnia Lambton, to have experienced people and represent uh, the advisory council to guide them, because this is such an um, unknown right now, and we need to learn from people who are experiencing these health concerns. That's the, that's the right thing to do. We need to involve them, and we need to ask them, you know, what is it that they're seeking? Because when we have that advisory council, of course you're gonna have to have some terms of reference, a mandate, and maybe that is also guided by what they've experienced, right? Um, surrounding those uh, terms of reference, when we're consulting, when we're hearing and collaborating with people and, and families and parents and grandparents, who and patients and people who are experiencing these health concerns, pandas and pans, finding out what that is so that we can, so that the advisory council can be effective, right? Um, making it up within these walls and not consulting with the people that are actually living it, living what's going on, I think doesn't help research and uh, the advisory council to develop what their uh, mandate would be, right? We need to know what their experiences are. So um, I, th I thank the member for his passion and for the fact that, you know, he is good at what he's doing here today. He's good at listening to his constituents. You know, he decide he's, we have the first step, which was the, the bill in recognition, October 9th, of the Pandas and Pans Day, Awareness Day. And oftentimes that's where things start. You know, it's a progression. Uh, we, are, we don't have knowledge of an issue and we start researching it, and we may, we, then we start educating people as well. Education sometimes comes first before research, as in this case. Um, you know, so education is a good thing. And so, you know, that was the first step. We had that recognition of awareness, and then the member, you know, <coughs> talked further, and, and probably at the pressure of the people who are experiencing this health concern. So good on them, good on them for continuing to lobby the member from Sarnia Lampton, and get and and him coming up with a, some kind of solution or mechanism to address their concerns. And so today, which is again one of the great things that we have um, the pleasure and the privilege of doing, is debating issues that we're not aware of. Is uh, you know listening to our members who bring concerns forward in their writing, and opening up the vast tools that we have as legislatures in our own writing to deal with problems. Forward. Um, so that is the next step that he's uh, progressed to. And then who knows, after these, uh, the advisory council, uh, you know, should it come to light? We're going to, I mean, we certainly support this initiative. Um, we'll see what happens after it gets, you know, sent to a committee or uh, where it goes from that stage. And then, you know, and as it, if it passes through this chamber and ends up to actually be legislation where this advisory council is created, um, then from that stage forward, that information will be, like they said, it's a report. They want it to be reported back to the legislature. We'll have to examine that, those results. And um, then from there, you know, that's where the health minister maybe can have some 
um, training, education in, in medical schools, because this is all brand new, right? So I just want to congratulate again the member and welcome everyone here who uh, has come here to support the member in this initiative. And uh, I look forward to uh, continuing the debate and hearing other perspectives and, and experiences that people have, have, um, are speaking to the bill. Thank you, Speaker. The debate, the member from Beaches, East York. Well, thank you, Speaker. Pleasure to see you in the chair this afternoon for what is private member's business here. This is, I think, one of those great days in our week where we get to do some very important work where I think the whole House can come, to better, come together on issues that are of particular importance to one member who's had his ear to the ground to hear what his constituents are saying, what others in the community are saying, and take action on it. And I'm delighted to be able to stand, take an opportunity to support the member from Sarnia Lambton on this initiative. Um, I came to understand Panda as a, a rare disease amongst children about uh, two and a half weeks ago. When a constituent of mine came to see me, she happens to be the uh, daughter-in-law of a very close personal friend, and I'd heard that they had some issues with their child back a year ago, and I didn't know what it was, didn't have any idea what it was about, but she reached out to me now that their child had stabilized to say she wanted to tell her, me about her experience with her son, Knox. So Erica Mills was here earlier. I wonder if some of the members of the family had a chance to meet her uh, when she was here earlier during question period. But Erica came to see me and said, you're not going to believe what happened. Very healthy, very active, one of her two children, her son, who suddenly started to display very odd symptoms. You know, his head ticking, uh, anxiousness. Um, uh, he started, to, he started to, to verbalize things they'd never heard out of his mouth before. And it was very distressing. As, as a parent, as you know it would be, and I'm sure your families have gone through exactly this distressing, unpredictable, un, under, understandable behavior changes in your child that happened really quite suddenly. And so they went to hospital, they went to emerge, as any good parent would, and there was no diagnosis of pandas at the time. They, they weren't quite sure what was going on. They gave them some, muscle, some, some relaxants and sent them home again. But the situation, the complications got worse and worse, and they were watching their loving child change dramatically before their fate, and they, they were just horrified. What do we do? What do we do? Now, Erica happens to be a researcher, a professional researcher, and so she went online, she went to journals, she went to the, to the University of Toronto Medical Libraries, and she started doing research to try to better understand, and her mother happens to be a physician as well. And she eventually came across Panda's diagnosis, and she went, said to her mother, look, this seems to be exactly what my Knox is going for, through. And it's not a complicated treatment. It's, it, it's you know, the drugs are, are available, readily available, but once you get the diagnosis. And so she brought that to her mother. Her mother agreed. They went back to the family physician, had the family physician do some in investigation. It's a simple blood test, or saliva test, I believe, in order to determine that, in fact, that there are antibodies running around there supposed to be attacking a strep virus, which are now actually attacking the brain of the child. And Knox wasn't exhibiting symptoms of strep throat, fever, or any of those, but just a simple blood or saliva test could, could indicate that he had these antibodies in his system that had to, be, had to be addressed. And so they put him on a treatment protocol, and I think it was three to four months of anti uh, antibiotics. And now he lives with that fear, they live with that fear, that it may come back. So they're watching him very, very closely. Now at some point I understand the immune system may become more robust and it won't be an ongoing danger to a, you know, a, a, a early teen or in, into an adulthood. But for now, they maintain that vigil to ensure if he starts to exhibit signs that they are now more recognizable, they will go and get him back on a, on a treatment system. So she came to me and I immediately said, you know, th we need awareness. And I've only been here since 2014, but I've seen the incredible work we've done in awareness on a whole series of issues by holding a a, a, a special day of recognition, for instance. So, in my mind, like, what about Panda's Day? Panda slash Pan's Day. And I looked and online in the U.S., October 9th is widely recognized as a, a day of recognition of this, this disease. And I thought, well, we should do a private member's bill. Well, it didn't take me long in my research to determine that another member of this House, 
member from Sarnia Lambton had already done a private member's bill to recognize October 9th as Panda's Day, and it was received the approvals of the House, and it went forward. And I congratulate him on that very, very important bill. But it doesn't, it doesn't mean that the work was done, because what we really need to do is get more information to pediatric doctors, because even this woman's own mother is a doctor. She wasn't aware of, of the, the, the symptoms that would lead her to a diagnosis. So we need to do more. And so I thought, as part of my work, I would go and, and spend some time with the Minister of Health, which I did, and said, what we need here is some kind of a professional uh, signed circular to go to every single pediatric doctor in the province of Ontario. Are you aware of these symptoms and that the cause could be, and that this is the simple test to confirm, and these are the treatment options? It seemed like a simple thing to me. You would do this in any professional organization. You know, you'd send out a, an advisory to all the people who are dealing with diagnosis, of, particularly pediatric diagnosis, to say, be aware. And it's not unlike, and a, a member of Sarnia Lambton will also be uh, very familiar with the issues around Lyme disease, because with, the, uh, with climate change and the, the temperatures warming in Ontario, we're starting to see more deer ticks carrying Lyme disease up into Ontario, and it's not a, a, an illness that's well understood by doctors in the province of Ontario. And so we're seeing people with Lyme disease not getting the treatment early they need, and it results in catastrophic difficulties with them later in life if you don't get early treatment. Well, the same, I think, could be said about pandas, pan, is the earlier you treat, the better the chance for full recovery, and the lack of treatment can lead to catastrophic, uh, serious consequences for the children and their family, and not being able to in, in, in indulge in a full and productive life. So I had this conversation with the, with the minister, is, you know, can't we be doing something along those kinds of professional directions to all doctors? And he said, well, that would be difficult. For the Ministry of, of, of Health to tell doctors how to do their job is kind of overstepping authority, and we need some other mechanism. And so I had reached out to the member from Sarnia Lambton to say, you know, so what else has been happening since you do? And it just happened that day, he said, I'm going to table my private member's motion, which he's got in front of us today. And so from my perspective, the timing was very fortuitous. And I was, you know, welcomed the opportunity that I could support him, and I know all members of the House will support that the ministry does determine through, and I think you're asking for a, uh, uh, an advisory council that can put good professional minds on the on the case to do figure out how best to get disseminate the information to those who need it most. And so that's the the minister told me, very supportive of going down. The, he, you know, was aware of the of, of the disease but wasn't aware whether we were doing anything special within the ministry. And now we have a ministry change, of course, and I haven't had the chance to speak to the new Minister of Health and Long-Term Care, uh, but I'm, I'm absolutely certain that her staff will, will be absolutely you know, on topic of trying to do the work, particularly because this is not like a rare disease wherein the treatment is costing hundreds of thousands of dollars and putting taxpayers, you know, all. Money spent well to keep people healthy is obviously very important, but we face that issue often where people come and say, we want you to fund this drug, even if it's, we're not sure it's going to be effective and it's going to cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. But that's not the situation here. The situation here is if you get the information right, if you get the diagnosis right, you can treat it. And I'm delighted that part of our treatment options now under OHIP Plus is that every child under the age of 25, of course, is now entitled to free, free medicine. And so the drugs associated with treating PANDAS, PAN, would be free under the OHIP Plus program, and I, I think that's an important step. But it doesn't deal with the more important diagnosis piece, which is what I think I hope this advisory council can focus on, is to bring those talents, those best minds together. Um, so. It may be that an advisory council that's constructed out of the ministry could, in fact, put the kind of information circuit together, maybe start publishing into you know, medical journals that doctors read, maybe make it part of continuing education for physicians in the province of Ontario that will alert them to the symptoms. Now, Erica Mills told me, and, and I've seen in some of the other government material that's come to me, this is, they, they classify this as a rare issue. But she's seen evidence in the U.S. that suggests that almost one in 200 kids could be affected. 
And I look around at the kids I know in the community who are suffering from dyslexia or autism or OCD issues, and you have to stop and ask yourself, wait a second, did something happen earlier in their life that changed their behavior that never, never was caught and had an effect? So I think the incident is not nearly as well understood as it should be and that we should be putting the research dollars into ensuring we know more of what we're doing uh, to, to, to identify it. So, sp Speaker, I don't know if any of my other members want an opportunity to say a few words on this, but I will absolutely work with the men men member from, from Sarnia Lampta to ensure that we get the work done so that we can support the families in, from his own community, in my community, but across the province of Ontario to ensure that they get the diagnosis and the treatment that they so richly deserve. So thank you to the member for bringing the bill, and I look forward to having further conversations with him about it. The member from Elgin, Middlesex, London. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker, and I'm uh, proud to stand up and uh, speak to uh, the motion from the member from Sarnia Lambton on uh, pediatric autoimmune neuropsychotic disorder associated with streptococcal infections and pediatric acute onset neuropsychotic syndrome. Um, uh, first of all, I've got to say is uh, welcome to uh, those advocates that are here today. It's, it's quite important that you do take the time and opportunity to uh, voice your concerns to not only your local MPPs but to the legislature as a whole. And uh, I do have to commend the, the member from Sarnia Lampton. Yeah, yeah. He, he's a champion in this House of private members business. I think he's passed five or six motions or bills in this legislature, um, which probably is, has to be close to a record in such a short amount of time. And, and he does so because not only does he bring issues to the legislature, which are important to Ontarians, but he's also able to reach across uh, the, the uh, the aisle. The aisle. The divide, Thank you. <laughs> Read across the, the aisle in order to uh, find consensus on issues, and uh, and this is another one of those issues that he's brought forward. Uh, and uh, I'm I'm quite proud to be here to speak in, in support of it, and know that uh, uh, the PC caucus is 100% behind uh, uh, the member from Sarnia Lambton. Um, it, it's interesting that uh, we, we have another one of these uh, pieces of, of legislation coming forward to deal with a rare disease. It wasn't uh, less than a year ago uh, that a member from Kitchener-Conestoga, Mike Harris, uh, brought forth a, a similar type of, of bill uh, which called on a, uh, a special advisory committee on rare diseases as a whole. And uh, it was quite uh, important that that bill came forward because it, it put a spotlight on the fact that uh, Ontario is, 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 is not uh, dealing with the issue of rare diseases very well, and and I and it, it's hard to blame anyone. However, it's been occurring for so long, um, we do have to throw it out in the spotlight. Medical technology this day uh, has become so advanced; our diagnostic uh, protocols have been so specific that more and more types of diseases and conditions are being diagnosed. And the treatments that result from those diagnoses and and uh, responses um, have become so specific that we are creating more and more rare diseases because we are becoming a brighter and more technically advanced society. And I only mention that uh, speaking with any GI type of problem, gastrointestinal issue. Uh, we've become so specific. It used to be maybe we just treat Crohn's disease or colitis, but now we're, we can break it down even further. And the medication and treatments coming out and the understanding coming out Thank for these diseases uh, is so advanced that uh, many times misdiagnosis occurs. And it's not a misdiagnosis because our healthcare professionals are failing us. I, I think Ontario has the brightest, highest trained healthcare professionals, not only in North America but the world. But it's, be fat, it's because our advances are so quick in coming forward. And I think that's the role the government needs to play is how do we create uh, an integrated system so that these advancements in society, that the government is well informed on what's happening in the medical system, that they can find a way to ensure that that information uh, and ideas is spread through the healthcare professionals in the system and our hospital system so that, that we can diagnose these conditions quicker. Uh, and ensure that treatment begins soon. Um, it, it, it's an unimaginable uh, as a parent, and, and most of us who are parents are blessed to be parents here, the fact that if your son or daughter were to take ill, 
and you'd go to your doctor and, and they weren't getting better and they were just something missed. And, and I know in this system it's really hard to see specialists to start with. Um, the fact that we have the potential to continually misdiagnose these issues uh, is only heartbreaking to the family. I, you can talk about the cost associated with it, but I'm just going to talk about the anxiety and the worry that uh, parents must feel. And, uh, and it's bills like the member from Sarnia Lampton that, that make this really important to bring forward so that uh, the Ministry of Health is kept well informed because the, the, the bureaucrats on the Ministry of Health, the minister themselves, there's so many issues to worry about that they can't possibly keep on, on track of all the issues going on. And I know the ministry created a rare house advisory committee in a hospital about a year, just just same time that Michael Harris was pushing the issue. Um, but that, that, that committee is not enough for this issue. Um, and, and maybe perhaps this, this motion wouldn't have to have come forward if the government had a proper consultation process and, and listening to, to healthcare professionals as they reach out for help. Um, my other point I just want to bring forward here, because um, hopefully this will pass, is the implementation of this committee. Uh, the member opposite mentioned Lyme disease. Well, it's been, I think, about two years now since we passed a similar motion to create a str strategic plan for Lyme disease in this province. And we've had little to no movement. As a member from Haldeman Norfolk and a member from the third party uh, whose bills pushed this forward, um, step one is get this motion passed. Step two, so we need your help going forward once we pass this motion, is to push the government into action. And there's more than enough time to get this started before the election, so don't let that be an excuse. Um, and, and know if this motion passes and and we're fortunate enough to form the government that we will continue to ensure that it's enacted. So, um, but we need to ensure and get this push uh, quickly as possible. And I will make a small comment on OHIP Plus. Uh, you know, it's great to expand coverage for OHIP Plus. Um, and since we're talking about a pediatric condition, OHIP Plus fails because the formulary does not cover enough dosage forms for children. I'm getting calls from psychiatrists, I'm getting calls from family doctors that the dosage their child was on, especially for antidepressant medications, the entire drug benefit formulae does not cover children's doses. And uh, I'm hoping they're making those changes to that formula to ensure that those children are going to get the treatment they've made. Um, we can do better with OHIP Plus. It was a rushed uh, implemented. We're, our side of the house, we're, we're going to fix that. But I hope the government's making note and necessary changes in case they want to expand it, that uh, they need to do better homework on creating these, these, uh, these programs. So uh, thanks again, member from Sarnia Lambton. We're, we're, we're proud of you. Uh, we're going to pass this piece of legislation today, and then we're going to get to work to implement it. Thank yeah. you very much. Further debate? The Minister from Temiskaming Cochrane. Someday. <laughs> the member from Temiskaming Cochrane. <laughs> anyway, um, it's uh, always an honour to be able to stand in this house and speak on behalf of our constituents, which the uh, member from Sarnia Lambton does very well. Today, it's an honour for me to be able to sit in this house and learn as a parent about what other families have to go through and learn that when I, when I first did it, I did a bit of research, and we just assume because it's um, not well identified that it's going to be very hard to treat. And that's actually, from what I've learned today, not actually the case. It's, it's identifying, it's um, yeah, recognizing, identifying, and I think it's a very good thing to create this council. And just, um, on behalf of the NDP caucus, we fully support this initiative. Um, the member of Sarnia Lambton is, uh, um, although we disagree philosophically on a lot of issues with the Conservatives and with the Liberal government, on issues like this, we work together, and I don't think you could find a better champion on an individual issue than the member from Sarnia Lambton. I, I would really like to recognize that. Um, but it's also been mentioned, once we, once we pass, this, this, this motion will pass today. Once we pass it, um, and many of us have gotten motions passed, it's incumbent then on us all to um, force, and sometimes you don't have to force, but force is probably the word you need to use. Force the government of the day, regardless if it's the current government or if we form the government or the Conservatives form the government, to keep the pressure on to actually make this motion become not just the will of the legislature, not just the will of the people, 
but the will of the government. Once again, I would ask that if you're having a separate conversation, either uh, have it somewhere else or please make it so that we can hear the speaker. Uh, these people have come a long way to hear uh, what's being said, and I'd appreciate uh, you listening. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. And I think if, if I can leave one message, yes, the NDP caucus fully supports this initiative, and, but if I can leave, we have to unite and make sure whatever government, whoever forms a government, right now we have this government, we'll push them, and whoever sits on that side of the aisle, come June 8th or June 9th, we have to make sure that, yeah, I think it'll be us, but you can, you can dream, but that we continue to work together to ensure, to ensure that this motion becomes a reality, because this isn't something that is unattainable. This is attainable, and this can make a huge difference in those children's lives, in those families' lives. Thank you very much, and thank you very much for advocating for the people you love. Thank you. Uh, the member from Bruce, Bruce, Bruce Gray on South. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Thank you to my caucus colleague from Sarnia, Bob Bailey, for taking this important step in continuing our party's efforts to ensure that interns with rare conditions have the support they need. And special acknowledgement to Carrie Henriksen and her son Jonah Henriksen and all of the people in the gallery that have came here today to support this. It's a very important cause and one that I'm proud to stand and support. Following up on the work done some years ago when we declared October 9th as Pandas Pans Awareness Day in Ontario, we're now taking this advocacy work to the next level which is to establish an advisory council on PANDAS PANS to research, diagnosis, and treatment relating to the disorder and syndrome. As you heard earlier, PAN stands for Pediatric Acute Onset Neuropsychiatric Syndrome, and PANDAS stands for Pediatric Autoimmune Neuropsychiatric Disorder Associated with strept Streptococcal Infections. It is not one we often hear about, but because of that first step this legislature took some time ago, we were able to raise awareness, and as a result, we now know that we need to do more to help improve our understanding of the two disorders, which have slightly different diagnosing criteria. So far, we have learned that PANDAS is believed to develop from a case of strep throat, and it results in a multitude of behavioral issue issues similar to obsessive compulsive disorder or autism, and in the words of the parents with kids suffering from PANDA, a lot of mental anguish that, and I quote, just explodes overnight. Parents describe their symptoms as anger and raging, followed by life-changing symptoms such as severe restrictive eating, intense anxiety, tics, personality changes, decline in math and handwriting abilities, and sensory sensitivities. And this autoimmune illness affects one in every 200 children. That's a similar statistic to childhood cancer, yet there's no single test, no single lab test available to confirm the diagnosis. This is why raising awareness levels is critical as PANDAS PANS is often misdiagnosed and undertreated due to the lack of awareness both by the public and even the medical community. The truth is the disorders aren't widely recognized in most medical circles, and treatment is difficult to come by and isn't covered by health insurance, albeit the province provides support through treatment of symptoms of tick disorders. This is why we need to set up an advisory and coordinate a plan to help children suffering from this autoimmune illness. The members opposite will know that our party has always supported individuals and families who are affected by rare diseases. It was just two years ago that another caucus colleague, an MPP for Kitchener-Conestoga, Michael Harris, stood here on behalf of rare disease sufferers who were seeking access to treatments. He championed a motion for an all-party select committee into rare disease treatment after the government refused to help these families, many of them who had been forced to scrape up the needed funds themselves or suffer in silence. In some cases, these treatments can run between $3,000 a month or $25,000 a year. Similarly, another colleague from our party, an MPP from Nepean and Carleton, Lisa McLeod, did the same. Our PC caucus will continue to, to support and to take next steps towards access to support and treatments for interns suffering from rare diseases. And at home, in Bruce Gray Owned Sound, my constituents support the same. I've received emails and phone calls from concerned citizens in my riding who are not happy with this government's treatment of patients, the government's lack of support for people who are struggling to access treatment in Ontario, and whom the government is forcing to max out resources to pay for life-saving treatment. This is why it is important for us to change that by supporting this motion and putting parents and families dealing with symptoms and pandas pans on notice that we are listening, we do care, and we are taking action to help. 
I'm proud to stand here today with my colleagues from Sarnia, Kitchener-Conestoga, and the and Carlton, who continue our fight and call for better support and access to health care and treatment for internals, all internals. And I truly support my colleague, Mr. Bailey from Sarnia. I think this is number six of his PMBs. He always brings those, those issues that are actually truly impacting people across the province. And he was just sharing that it's kind of unfortunate sometimes that it's on Thursday afternoons when the House isn't here. People go home to their ridings, and that's just the reality of the situation. Please know that the people that aren't here in the House today, it's not a reflection that they're not caring and concerned because there's tons of support across, I hope, all three parties. And at the end of the day, this motion will get passed and we will be able to take critical action as quickly as possible. Thank you very much. Much, Madam Speaker. Further debate? The member, the member from Sarnia Lambton has two minutes to reply. Well, thank you, Madam Speaker, and it's a privilege to uh, be able to respond to all my colleagues. I'd like to thank at this time the member from London Fanshawe for her kind remarks, the member for Beaches East York for his support, of course. The member from Elgin Middlesex London, who is a pharmacist by trade before elected, always gives us great advice on medical issues. The member for Temiskaming Cochrane, and of course uh, my colleague here next to me, the member from Bruce Gray Owen Sound, uh, for all their support today. But more importantly, I want to thank again, the most importantly, the people from Sarnia Lampton and Cross Ontario that are here today, and the person of Terry Hendrickson, her son Jonah, Aaron Kowarczyk, Janet Trider, Ellen Nich Nich Nichol. Erica uh, Mills, uh, Mike Boland, Doreen Crombie, and Don Crombie. It's most important that you made the journey here today from across yeah. Ontario and Sarnia Lampton to be here <clears throat> to advocate on behalf of your children and, and your family and friends. So I did make a couple of other notes here. I'm going to uh, just, uh, I, I understood from Carrie that there's only two doctors in across Ontario, uh, one from Chatham uh, and one from uh, uh, somewhere else in Ontario that are maybe presently treating this disease. I could be corrected on that, but it's not a widely uh, treated disease because there's just no one either with enough expertise in it or that uh, takes the time uh, to be made aware of this. So we need to work with this. I, have, I appreciate the support of all three party, two parties, the three parties in the House to do this. And uh, as the minister, as uh, the member from Temiskaming and Cochrane said, whatever government forms uh, after June 7th, uh, if I'm given the privilege and honour of being returned to this House, yeah, I intend yeah. to work with whatever stripe of government's in place, and I intend to stay on this, and uh, I appreciate the words, and I'll hold the members, if they're all returned, hopefully they will be too, that we'll uh, make a point of following up on this for the, uh, the children and the parents and the future children that could be affected by this. So. It is a, a, a private member's business. I've sat here many Thursdays, and I think if uh, everybody in the province could see, have the privilege to be here on Thursdays and hear the many issues that are brought up uh -huh. from ridings across the province, and uh, you learn so much on Thursdays. I'm not so sure the rest of the week, <laughs> but Thursdays definitely for private member's business because that's when the members from every party in the House bring issues that are important to them and to their constituents here to this House, which is such a privilege to serve in. Thank All you, ma'am. Thank you. We will deal with uh, this ballot item at the end of private members' uh, public business. Um, orders of the day. Ballot item number 28, private members' notice of motion number 81. Ms. Taylor. Member for the Hamilton Mountain. Speaker, I move that in the opinion of this House, the Government of Ontario should reverse years of chronic underfunding and provide adequate resources for community-based mental health services for children and youth to immediately eliminate the wait list of an estimated 12,000 children and youth awaiting care, help reduce the stress and financial insecurity faced by families seeking assistance, 